Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to another Lair by Lair. In this tutorial, I wanted to make a 3D printed flexible bumper for the Adafruit Neo Trellis M4. So this is the button, the enclosure and buttons kit pack, which has everything you need to make your own synthesizer. It comes with a really nice acrylic case that uh, is a part of the kit and it's bolted together with these nylon screws. The edges are pretty sharp, so what we want to do is create a 3D printed bumper that will wrap around the edges. It'll provide a little bit more protection, and if we're using a flexible filament, um, you can create some really nice uh, kind of elastic, rubbery type enclosures, bumper in this case, uh, to just kind of give a little bit more feel. The edges are a little bit sharp, so they kind of hurt my hands, so I'll round off the edges. And uh, we'll even have some fun with the with the edges with the sides uh, to create some cool geometry. Um, so here's the PCB. There are some things you want to make uh, room for, notably the micro USB ports, uh, this Stemma connection. It's a, a GAST PH connector, and this headphone jack. So what I'm going to work off of is um, this right here is uh, a GitHub repo for the enclosure and the PCB file. So the enclosure is just an Illustrator file, which I have open here. This is what it looks like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this into Fusion and model around this, extrude it out into a 3D shape. But before we do that, I just want to make sure that uh, I clean up this um, thing. So we don't need any of these shapes. So what we can do is, is just select uh, the shapes here that are inside of the frame and just delete that. And then you're left with uh, just the outer frame of this. So now we can export this out. I exported this out as a DXF. So when you hit Save As, you can hit Format, and then there's an AutoCAD interchange file, which is a DXF. So I have that already exported out. I'll hit Cancel. And note that the, uh, the measurements, the units are already set up as millimeters. So you can see it's 140 by 80 millimeters. So that's going to be important. So inside of Fusion, I have a new document, and uh, I'll just create a new, well, let's create a new document or a new component. And then uh, I'll create a sketch. Let's go ahead and draw on the bottom here. And then what I'll do is I'll use the DXF import. So I'll just uh, bring up the, the shortcuts and say D, DXF. There it is. Hit enter. Now that I'm already inside the uh, sketch, I'll just select the DXF file, which is right there. Hit open. Fusion is going to calculate it and uh, bring it in as, uh, as in inches. So we need to go to the units and then change that to millimeters. That'll rescale it for us. And then there's also uh, some offset stuff that we can add to kind of nudge it into place where we want. I kind of want it up here. So using the X and Y distance, I'll do something like negative maybe 50, 60, and then maybe 90, maybe 100. And that way we're just a little bit more closer here. You don't have to do that, but I like to do that. So now that we have this, let's go ahead and double check our measurements. So I'll select, uh, well, let's hit uh, Stop Sketch. And then I'll just select this, hold down Shift and select that edge. And right here you can see it's 140, so that's correct. And then over here to over here should be, yep, 80 millimeters. So that's pretty accurate. Okay, now I'm going to just select that profile, hit E on my keyboard to extrude it, to extrude it, to extrude it. Uh, and, and I measured it with my calipers. It measures out to about 12 millimeters not exact it's more like 12.1 or 2 but in our case literally in my case <laughs> it's pretty fine so this will be our kind of representation of the acrylic case there are some other things that we want to accommodate for like the like the screw heads um, but I've already measured out that they're about three millimeters away from the edge so as long as we're within three millimeters of a flange uh, we should be okay so now that I have that I'll go ahead and just kind of change this color so I can differentiate it. So it's blue here. I just prod up the appearance using the hotkey A. I'll close that and I'll create another component and this will be our our actual bumper. So to create the bumper, I'm just going to select this surface here and then I'm going to borrow that geometry. So I'll hit the sketch tool and that projects it into a new sketch. So all I really need to do is to create a couple offsets to create this bumper. So using the offset tool, it's O as a short shortcut key. I'll select this outer edge and it selects it as a whole loop. And then what I'll do is I'll go in. I want this bottom to be about three millimeters on the inside. So hit OK. And then what I also want to do is I'll do another offset. This time it'll be uh, 1.5 millimeters on the outside. 
and I'll do yet another offset. And then this time it's going to be one and a half millimeters going on the inside. So with these series of offsets, we can create all the geometry we need uh, to create our bumper. So I'll hit stop sketch. And what I'll do is I'll select uh, this first outer edge here. Hit E for the extrusion. And I'll bring it up. One of the cool things you can do is uh, change the, the extent from distance to object. And then select the top of the, the object here. And then put extend faces. And that way, if we ever change uh, the extrusion of the acrylic case, uh, this will update with it. So hit OK. And that creates a new body. And now you can see that we have a, a, a sort of a simple frame. Now, as is, it would kind of slip off. So what we need to do is we need to use those offsets to create a bit of a flange that will hold it down. So I'll bring out the, the sketch that we used. And I'll select these two, actually the, the whole, uh, the three of the offsets. And then I'll extrude these down by, let's say, one and a half millimeters. And you can change that however thick you want. This way it'll uh, raise it off a bit. So now we got that. Now if we look at it um, like this, you can see that this will uh, keep the uh, acrylic case from slipping out from the bottom. We want to do the same for the top, um, but we're going to do it a little bit different. Instead of having that three millimeter distance, we'll just use that one and a half millimeter. So I'll bring that out using the exact same sketch. Uh, I'll hide that for a second. Actually, let's go into the component, hide that, and then we can select this offset and then the inner offset that we did. And now we can use uh, the start profile plane. We can change that to from object and then just select the top of this, uh, the top of the frame there. And then we can use our handler to kind of give us some, some extrusion here. Uh, this I want it to be again one and a half millimeters. You can change it to whatever, but I'm using one and a half millimeters. And it looks like I forgot the uh, the uh, the outer frame, the outer offset. So I'll double click that again, and just select that inner frame there. And it looks like we don't need that outer one. So now I have <laughs> I have to deselect to reselect. So once you make your selection, you'll see how um, it's just one and a half millimeters here. So one of the cool things we can do is to avoid, since we will be 3D printing this, if we were to print this as is, there's a bit of an overhang here. And actually, it looks like it's two bodies. So we need to go back into that and say, join body. That way, it adds it to that. And now we have one body. There we go. So now you can see that we have that overhang. It's about you know 90 degree overhang, which is bad for 3D printers. So one quick way to, to, to uh, fix that is to just throw a chamfer on there. So I'll bring out the chamfer tool. And I'll select this outer edge here. And w we can add a, a chamfer of one and a half millimeters, which is really uh, the extrusion distance of it. And that way we have this really nice uh, chamfer so that our printer can print this without any support material. Now. What's really cool about Fusion is you can add more um, you can add more material to the top here by just modifying that first extrusion. So I'll change this from one and a half to two. That way I can round off this edge here so that when we hold it, it'll actually feel comfortable in our hands. But before that, I'll show you what happens. Uh, bef you know what happens when you select the edge. You'll see that it doesn't select this edge. And one of the things I like to do is apply a fillet to any sharp corners so that our tool paths are really nice and, and, sh and smooth, really. So I'll put a, a fillet here on these edges about half of a millimeter, maybe a full millimeter. Why not? That looks good. And now when we try to apply a fillet to the outer edge, you'll see that it selects the whole edge as a loop, as a one continuous uh, loop. So now I can add a, a one and a half millimeter or two millimeter, whatever you like, uh, rounded edge. We can even do that to the bottom here so that it's nice and round on both sides. Hit enter, and there we go. Now this would print OK as is, but remember there are some things we want to account for, being the headphone jack and the micro USB port. So what I so what I did is I just cut a, a giant hole right here on this wall here. So using the same technique as we started this, we can just select the surface, create sketch. 
And then what I'll do is I'll use the rectangle tool to kind of draw some, because I don't have enough, uh, I, I didn't project this rounded edge. So we could just create a rectangle that will kind of cover that area. And then we can use our dimension tool to constrain this. So let's say I want this edge to have a distance uh, between that edge. And I'll say one and a half millimeters. And I'll do the same for the opposite side, one and a half millimeters. And then if I want this line to touch the bottom, I can just use a collinear constraint and that'll lock it down there. The top here doesn't really matter as long as it uh, goes beyond the rounded edge. We can select that and kind of cut it out. So that's what I'll do now. I'll select these two profiles, hit the hotkey E, and then just punch through it this way. We can preview our cut before we apply it, just to make sure it cuts it where we want. That looks pretty good. I'll hit the OK. And now I have our open space for the micro USB port and the headphone jack. One of the last things I like to do is add some fillets to these sharp edges because they just will smooth it out using our fillet tool. I'll select that and put just one there and that looks pretty good. So again, looking at it uh, from below, you can see that chamfer on that edge there is really nice. It's at a 45 degree angle and 3D printers love 45 degree angles. So that will print no problem. All right, so that's pretty much all I wanted to show. It's a really simple bumper. We can print this as is. Again, we want to print this in uh, a, a flexible type of material like Ninja Flex. Um, it's also referred to as TPU. Uh, there's lots of different uh, manufacturers of it. So whatever uh, colors and things you like, as long as it's TPU, it should work great. Now, one last important thing, this is the actual final version. What I ended up finding out is if I were to print the bumper like this, um, there isn't a lot of tension on the bottom here. So it tends to kind of flop out. So what I did was I added these little strips that tie this, uh, this side to that side. And that creates a bit of tension when you uh, wrap it over the acrylic it keeps it nice and sturdy. So uh, you could get all fancy with it. In this case, um, I wanted to make sure that you could still see the lovely silk screen. And even this little hexagon kind of circles uh, the chip, the Atmel SAMD chip that's on the board. So you can get really clever and make some fun shapes and stuff. Uh, also, I added these, uh, these kind of pyramid triangle shapes on the edges just to kind of give it some depth because it looked kind of boring just as a bumper like that but maybe that's what you want maybe you can add some loops and stuff for a lanyard or uh, some handles or something you get all crazy with it but this definitely adds protection to the case if uh, you if i were to drop it now it's definitely going to be nice and secure the edges are really comfortable um, and there's just a lot of things you can do with it it prints in like two hours so that's really nice and if you guys uh, want to get your own Neo Trellis M4, um, definitely sign up to be notified when they're back in stock. I'll have all the links down in the description. Thank you guys so much. For, <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next one.